Right, hi guys, how are you doing? I am doing an impromptu video here, so this came up this morning as I woke up and I just, it's been something that's been on my mind since it's been on the news. So about this tragic event of these eight souls who lost their lives at a well-known artist concert in America. I'm just lighting, I'm getting the, the big guns are coming out today. So this is the spiritual guns um to throw some light and some pers perspective on it uh so for those who don't know me hello my name is angela and i am a an intuitive i've been an intuitive for as many years as i can remember i'm hoping this doesn't set the smoke alarms off um one of my neighbors set the fire alarm off on sunday night and it was i think they just burnt some toast this lovely little old lady and I think it just the whole building was like what's going on and the fire engines coming because it was so loud so I need to be a bit careful and um, my Hollywood as well so I might slightly open the window there just to clip but it's just to clear the energies as well because this is really it's heavy energy this guys it's not um this is why the big guns are here the angels so we're just going to clear everything around this energy but also what I really want to do is something that I used to do when I was younger with my parents we always had a tradition of lighting a candle for the person who passed away or a memory or to acknowledge or to um, to send a prayer up to heaven to them I mean it wasn't a religious thing it was kind of a spiritual thing in my family um, right okay so I've got the names here so John Hilgert Apologies if I don't pronounce them. So I'm gonna light a candle, each of them. I've just brought up on here um, uh, an article. It's very hard to find an article that just had their names that wasn't going on and on about the story. So this is for John Hilgert, Brianna Rodriguez. I'm just going to light them on my and um, the candles and put them on my table. Franco Patino. Okay. Jake Joenic. Some gorgeous names here. Gorgeous souls. Axel Acosta. Danish bag or bag. Apologies if I don't pronounce your name correctly. To the families and to the loved ones also around the energies of these souls. Rudy Piena. And Madison Dubisky. Beautiful names, beautiful souls. May the angels take you to heaven safely around your loved ones, your beloveds. May you find peace, rest and solace. Because it's just days from your passing. So I'm just gonna ring the bells now, guys. This for me always brings in the energy of the angels. Another two times. And I just feel the energies. It's funny, actually, the first energy that came through was Chamuel, and then I've got Metatron, I've got Uriel. It's like one comes in and they all come in. Um, my main guide would be Archangel Michael. I've got his, I've asked for his energetic suit of armour on to talk about the areas that I want to talk about. So it was so interesting. I was doing my makeup earlier, and it's like sometimes when you get a message from spirit, it's like it, it kind of, well, I'm just going to say it. It's 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 most important. It's a higher priority than other things that you're going on. I actually had to say to Spirit, look, I just need to go and pay this bill because they were just bringing in a lot of information. But I was it was when I was putting on my eye makeup. So I've got quite a few things that I want to try and talk about. So I'm going to ask the angels, please, to help me to bring in this information as clear and concise as I can. Because I, I am going to be honest, guys, I have a habit of just going off on one. Because I like to be with the people that I'm talking to 
and I know I'm not doing a live here, but I like to talk to people as if they're my beloved friends, um, because I think this is how we have the best conversations. So that's how I see you. So I've got this eye primer that I put on, even though I don't really wear that much eye makeup. And it's I Got The Power is on the, is the name of it. And it's got a number seven on, I won't say the brand, but it was like spirit will like look at the, look at the, the message on the eye product. And it was all day wear. So it's like almost like all day protection. Uh, and it's an eyeshadow based primer and it's almost like the message and this was as I was listening to um, the information I was getting around this concert and obviously it's a really tragic event that's happened and that's why I wanted to honour the souls first and their families and their loved ones and send them healing and send them love because as a global community that we are it's about leading and demonstrating these practices and what what they are um because i i was perturbed by what happened and i was i mean i don't know these people i don't know the situation but i was angry about it because and this is very much we all get go through this don't we where, where we go we want to blame we want somebody to blame it's very like 3d earth uh, trapped in the ego you know if I blame you I feel better about the situation who can we scapegoat so I want to say in this this video this is not about blaming or shaming somebody because certain people in the public eye are actors on the world stage so they are playing out a role to help people to wake up also they've got their own responsibilities um and I think this will be a massive wake up call for this artist. But I also think there's a very, very specific, there's a there's a big awakening around this situation. And it's clearing a lot of these energies. We're in Scorpio season. Scorpio will reveal the most horrific situations, um, some of the most awful scandals around um, children and abuse and, <clears throat> you know, um, like we've just had this awful unveiling of um, a man in England who is a necrophiliac, is it? Where he's basically um, abused people's bodies when they, were, when they were dead. He had access to it, he was a hospital electrician. Anyway, I don't wanna get stuck in these energies. I just want to make the point here that with Scorpio, it goes, it's the energy that can only go here. It's his job to reveal put light on, shed light, which means revealing, opening up and allowing us to see what we need to see, not even if we're directly a part of that journey, but um, I think if we work with spirit, we will always ask the questions, well, why has this happened? Why has this happened? So this, it's, it's funny how spirit will talk to you through, it's through the Trotwood carry water moments, it's in the moments of quiet introspection and reflection when you're just living in the moment. They will, it, they can, they can get you almost like there's a channel of receptivity. So it's almost like saying the eye has got the power, the third eye, and about trusting our clairvoyance, our inner sight, our inner knowing. Um, but we're coming up to this 1111 portal, which is in the next couple of days. And I'm gonna do a meditation and it's always a very powerful day. It's a powerful day for me personally because it's when my mum passed away years and years ago now. And she was a very pivotal, um, a, a pivotal, it's a pivotal day for me, but it's always a very powerful day for me. It's a power day because it, it reminds me of how I had the most amazing mum who helped me. If I didn't have the mum that I hadn't have had, I couldn't have learned the things that I did. Um, but also now for me as a teacher, it's very much about opening up to the energies that want to come through. So I've been kind of tuning into this 1111 day and the message that I got with it and that I will be working with, many spiritual teachers will be doing their own thing, was to work with the stories that we tell ourselves but also it's about our sovereignty so this whole last couple of years 
we've been told it has to be like this and there's things that we have yeah and there, there have had to be things that we've had to contend with um and it's brought you know our whole planet is awakening on a on a on a global scale we all wanted to be down here at this point no life is lost in vain every life leaves a legacy for the soul themselves but also for the journey that they leave after their journey carries on in spirit and i'm a big believer in that whatever um beliefs and um you know i say beliefs that you have about death and things like that um you know with mediumship i've seen and i've given messages where it's been for me i just know um that's what i believe in so if this is not for you then i would just ask you to move on because it's not for everybody and some people believe when you die you die and that's it um and that's fine i don't have a problem with that so anyway getting back to this message the eye is the power and it's tying into all this 11 11 portal i'm smoking up here guys but it's great because it's just clearing energy and using the power of plants and mother earth um so it's like well are we trusting our inner sight are we seeing the real the real truth are we seeing everything from the spirits of advantage point which is yours and mine because at the end of the day we have a higher self that we connect to our higher self is our is our spirits who we are it's where our wisdom lies um now so the i i got the power and it's almost like and it said i shadow base power and i know this might sound a bit ridiculous to some people but it's like the eye is being shadowed. So what's being revealed to the third eye, okay? What's really happening at a base level, at a root chakra level? Um, and also, what are the younger generations being primed for? Are they being... Because we, we have a younger generation now and generations being born who are coming in awakened. They don't need to do this journey of self-discovery and reflection and therapy and whatever needs to be they're coming in and they care about the environment from being little they don't want to eat animals that's their personal choice and i really respect it but there's also a lot of external influences that, are, that are, and the music industry is one of them but tying this all into the 1111 portal it's all linked to our sovereignty so we've had you know, the veils get lifted around this time. Scorpio really unveils things and it unveils the shadow aspects of life. So the eye is awakening to the shadow aspects of the world and what's really going on and the programming that, go that goes on out there. Um, so, a sip of coffee that's now gone cold, but there we go. So I pull some cards on this because this whole sovereignty is about being able to follow our own inner guide and it's about standing in our power which is a, which is always usually a strong message around Scorpio time but even more so this year after everything that we've all gone through globally and there's a link with this with music communication I don't want to say the arts um, but stories in language and wording and the power and the energy behind words, not only with what we've been hearing out there in the public for the last 18 months, what we've been told, the third eye, does it see the, the, what's really going on? Because Scorpio is the psychic detective. Even if it's very uncomfortable, it will always reveal to you what you need to see, what you need to hear. But the thing is, what we're being shown by the communication methods that most people listen to or are aware of in the world, which is the media, which is um, um, it's communication, so it can be the TV, it can be, it's programs, it's programming, um, and how that programming now, more and more people are waking up to it. Now, tying it into this concert and what happened, and I, because I, I said to Spirit, you know, I almost like, I've seen some of the back history of this and I've seen how 
in the past, it's almost like this mass hysteria in relation to, um, I want to say, idolising somebody in the public eye. And one of my friends always says, is it Marion Williamson talks about you're always going to be disappointed when your idol doesn't turn out to be what you expected them to be. But you've got to think about these public figures as actors playing a role. So they are sometimes, and, and this does not exclude them from the behaviour and taking personal responsibility, but they are also playing out a role and the symbolism of literally, and it's all tied into Hollywood, the Hollywood machine, the music industry, and how people are literally, I will trample over you to get one step further. And it's like this portal, we're being asked to walk hand in hand through it, and not this energy of, I will trample over you to get what I want or to be right. And we, and we know this because we've been dealing with this for the last whatever couple of years. And this again also extends to what we're being fed, the energy behind it, the way that language is manipulated and utilised to control people. And it's about us waking up to that. And this portal is about opening ourselves up to these stories that we're fed, that are imprinted, that we ingest. So you know, the language and the story that we we ingest and we invest in. Um, is it based in love or is it based in evil? Is the And I'm going to use that word because that's the word that I really get, is that because it's all about, well, you're not doing what I want so that I can be okay. Um, and that's, that's the dark energy that fuels this separation. And we have to be aware of it. So again, first step in any recovery is admitting that there's a problem, admitting what the problem is, coming out of denial and actually, and this is what awakening is for a lot of people. It's actually them waking up to what they're actually dealing with. So again, I've been aware of this for a long time about the language that's used in certain genres of music and certain songs that incites hatred especially towards women uh sexual hatred towards women you know um it also feeds this story and who's most impressionable is our youth and it's very much like well if i have all this stuff and i buy all these things and look i was there i was young i was you know influenced by this when i was younger and it was really interesting because i was watching a video and earlier on, and there was somebody had written in the comments about the books that they were forced to read in English. And what's ironic is I had this moment where I thought, God, none of this was a mistake because I failed miserably at school. I hated it. I was a bit of an outliner. I just didn't like it. I didn't fit in. I fitted in with all the oddballs who actually I really liked, but everybody was scared of them. But what it was was we were all actually free spirits that just we were quite rebellious as well but I was like kind of went underneath the radar I kind of stayed out of trouble until my last year and I didn't do very well at school um so I never got to realize that I loved English until I got older and I ended up teaching English and what I learned through this is that actually I wasn't meant to discover English at, through that method and through that way some people do with the classics I didn't, I never got that chance to, I just was just totally, I was out, I was somewhere else, I was in a different planet, I used to sit there in the English lessons and I didn't really know what was going on, I was just like, yeah, whatever, um, and again, it's all like this, well, school, a lot of the time, for some young people, well, my school especially paid attention to the children who were particularly studious, um, were, were towing the line so if you were checked out or you just weren't engaged they just didn't they didn't even bother with you um when I look back, back on it now it's ridiculous because I've taught a lot of these children as well I've helped them I've done intervention training and I think it's why I relate to them so much because you when you actually get to know them you realize that some of them are carers some of them are in families where they're looking after their parents they're coming from addiction backgrounds and you know, luckily we have 
more of a system that catches them now and looks out for them. Um, but anyway, getting back into this, I just wasn't meant to discover English then because my understanding of English is not doctrinated. It's not fed by poetry and classics. It's fed by expression. It's a, For me, it's an art form and it's a way I connect with the divine. So... Um, yeah, so again, it's all about sovereignty, isn't it? So your sovereignty is your own sovereign right, the right to choose, the right to stand in your power and know. And I've pulled some cards here because when I was tuning into all of this. So we've got the wisdom card here, which is all about learning joy art and music. So it's, again, lots of messages coming through about this, which is it's about a form of expression. But the vibration and the energy behind that expression, is it in the light, is it in the dark? Are we inciting separation? Are we bringing in consciousness? Um, and it's interesting because a lot of people in the music industry will say how they didn't get that contract or they didn't have success in the traditional model because the traditional model, as we are now, again, it's we know this publicly, it basically takes young people, it you know, they can also be a victim of the machine, the money-making machine. I will get you to bring in, pillage your art, and then I will spit you out. And again, artists are told a lot of the time they don't have their own artistic integrity, sovereignty, their right to choose how their music's produced, or distributed or even designed or um, created because it's like the music industry dictates to them they have to do it in order to survive and to make money and this is why artists and musicians that don't choose to go down that route or they are lucky enough to be able to utilize and harness their own personal power to produce music and art in their own way that brings forth that connection and that love and that consciousness are really to be celebrated but also what this so i know i'm bringing in a very tragic subject here but we have to look at that this is oh, this is bringing in a lot of awakening for young people and it's horrific what's happened i mean i was i was really um I mean, I don't know these people, I don't know these families, but how can you not be affected by hearing about these stories that literally the concert went on and there was a lot of um, the stories now about somebody injecting opioids into people. And, you know, it's this really dark stuff. It's very, um, it's just, it's a, it's a very dark energy, guys. And it's, and if you think if you've got all these people at one event energetically, it's a very powerful generation of, so whenever you do group events, it's like when you do a group meditation, it's very powerful for people for healing in a circle because you generate energy strongly in a group than you do on your own. So if you think all of those people in one place and the music and the the energy that's been generated but also if i want to talk about the machine so the programming of the machine it, it influences young people if i have these sneakers if i spend this money if i follow this person and it's all linked into social media as well and you know all these industries and these um, establishments that are just obsessed with power and control and money and it's not success to help people. They might look at it on the face of it, but it's we've got to start looking at what we support, what we invest in, where we put our money, where we put our voice, what voice we put on these platforms when we're there. Um, and it's not just about a conversation anymore. It's about action because the next two cards that came out were Sacred Purpose, uh, which says eternal flame and ancestral legacy. So it's a bit like, well, what are we leaving as a legacy for our young people? Uh, loss and lack, fear and victimization. Um, is it at the expense of, is the story that we invest in, that we put our energy behind now? Because we're, 
we're seeing it's not just about we know money's energy but it's about our physical energy what we put our time and our focus on grows and this goes to what we are putting our time and energy and our data into on these systems on to these programs in the matrix um, and the matrix is really that the world that we live in the consciousness that we're existing in um the blue pill and the red pill um or are we going to go in the middle what does red and blue make is it purple violet it's funny actually because if you look at my this color anyway what would you call it you call it um it's one of my favorite colors but again this I would call it like a royal purple and a royal blue. I really relate to these colours because it's very linked in with Archangel Michael. And Archangel Michael works with truth, courage and strength. Um, he, he has the sword of light that cuts through all the bullshit. And then also I seeing the colour, this with Zadkiel. Um, And again, it's about, it's all linked to the sovereignty of, are we just going to be, are we going to follow things because we're told, well, that's just how it is. That's in the media. This person is, um, are we going to look up to them and, and, you know, this whole celebrity thing. And again, it's not about having a go and scapegoating because I feel like, We've got to look at behind the method and the machine that these people are the face of, is what I want to say. Um, because it's not just one person. We can't just say, oh, it's your fault and you did this and you carried on. Well, yeah, of course. But it's the way the whole system is set up. It's toxic. Um and that needs to be cleared away. So this is why the courage card has come out. So this is about strength, fierceness and family. So again, it's us standing together. It's facing these situations with courage. It's not just looking at them at face value. It's going in and it's diving in deep. And it's actually looking at what's really going on behind the scenes. The veil is being lifted and all these things now. They're becoming so obvious that we can't ignore them. Um... But again, it's, you know, for a long time, there's certain genres of music and there's certain songs I've listened to and artists. And I just think there's a lot of dark energy behind it, behind the message that they are, that they are sending out there with their creativity, which I understand there's an expression. And again, people need to tell their story. I respect that. But I think there's a way that you can do it that doesn't, in, it's not at the expense of a certain group or section of society or at the extent where it has to be about power and money. I have to look a certain way, um, you know, to be powerful. Like I need shed loads of jewellery and cars and all of this lot. And actually what's ironic is when you actually get to that point on your journey, sorry to spoil it for some people, but when you actually get to that point, you you start accruing things and you and you realise that it's it just becomes about a wheel that you're on, a hamster wheel. Um, and if you're doing it, like you can do that for the right reasons, which is for the joy of creating, just for the sake of it. And usually people that go on and they're in that place become philanthropists and they just share their money because that's what it's all about. But that's not what I pick up around this. This is about a, a toxic system in society, which is I will take you and I will spit you out and I will trample over you in order to just keep the machine going. You're just like a cog in the wheel. And this is what a lot of Hollywood is built on as well. It's all about, it's like the PR machine now has gone into overdrive and it's literally like, look, um, we need to protect the brand and the image now. Let's not look at really what's really inciting this and which is fueling it. What is this foundation, what it's built on? Um because all it's gonna do is create more loss and lack and more pain. Um, and I think the youth that are that are in our midst and here right now are asking for more than this. Um, 
there's a lot of them that aren't even on social media, but there's also a lot of our young people that are, are on social media and are being influenced by this type of energy. So uh, what's interesting is what's come out, which is calming the waters, which is what this 1111 portal is all about. It's about clearing these ancestral bloodlines of stories, but globally as well. So what do we, what do we tell ourselves is how the, the way things have to be? And a lot of this waking up is, which has been there for a while, which is, well, how else are we going to do it? It's like at the moment in the UK as well, there's so much sleaze coming up in politics to the point now where they're hiding in plain sight because they don't want to deal with it. Um, and again, also this awakening with this 1111 is our sovereignty is about coming together. We are more powerful in groups than we are alone. So again, we can either, we're calming the waters, peaceful self-regulation. So we're going within and we're re reclaiming our sovereignty and we're saying to ourselves, actually, this, this fighting and getting angry is not going to produce a result or a solution. So... I self-regulate, I go within and I find my own peace, I find my own truth, I go in and I look at my own third eye, my inner spiritual sight, and I listen to what my own wisdom is guiding me to do. And this is what I had to do this morning, I was just like, I'm really annoyed about this because I could see the PR machine going off and how it wasn't like, we're devastated with this, and I could just see all these lies coming out to protect let's just protect, you know, let's just cut, let's just put another veil over what's really happened. And actually, we need to look at the whole system as a whole, we need to look at it from a bird's eye view, because actually it gets stuck in the drama of the blame and shame game. And actually, it doesn't get us anywhere. Um, <clears throat> and it's just, and it's funny, actually, because they're bringing me to like, you know, with, like, with the whole food system. And there was a there was a documentary on this about how some of the the biggest fast food outlets were dictating to the farmers so they were actually um causing farmers to change how they grew their crops and uh, farmed their animals in order to survive and make money so that the, it's like the end goal or the end product producer was had the control of the farmer which is where we've just lost all sense of sensibility because actually if we eat with the seasons and we eat with mother earth we're not pillaging we're not just thinking about well what do i want what does the consumer want so we'll just we'll just make you produce what we want when we want it even without the regulation or care of animals or of um how they produce their um produce um but again you have to get off that wheel and you have to say well i'm not going to participate in that i'm not going to participate in a model or a machine or a product that is it's not power to me. It's not power to my farm or to my... And it takes courage to do that. It does. It's like, what is your price? The prostitute archetype, isn't it? At what price am I going to sell my soul to a system, to a... And I think the youth of today that are coming in and, and, and these generations that are being born, they're not going to do that. They're going to call for for things to be sustainable. They're gonna call for, um, uh, not regulation, but transparency. And and I think that there's, uh, there's a turn in the midst here. And again, what's interesting about this whole system is that we have to look at what we're being shown. We're only being shown part of the story so again, this is what Scorpio will do. It will show you things in a way where you have to question it, where you can't just go, oh yeah, okay, that's like whatever. It will also show you in a way where you might get a response or it might trigger you and that will ask you to go deeper, deeper into what's really going on. 
Right, so I'm going to use these Hill Yourself Reading Cards by Inner Seagull because I like these. They're, they can be quite full on, but what I really like is they talk about what's, um, you know, the deeper... They talk about what's going on down here on the earth. And I think, again, spiritual teachers are being called to talk about we're not just in our bubbles of light, even though that's beautiful and wonderful and healing. We're not just hidden away. We have to talk about... Well, we don't have to, but we've guided... You know, everything now is becoming so interconnected that we're guided to talk about everything. Um it's not just under a language of light and codes and fairies and angels. It's about real life. It's about developing our language in a way where people can connect with us um, on a daily basis. Right, so have you got any messages around this? Um, okay. so interesting anything else the courage cards came out it has come out again so that's interesting right so this card is a bit full on hole in the soul okay so again <clears throat> excuse me the machine when I say the machine it's like um if we go back into, is it the red pill, where we are going into this, we're just, we're behaving on like a surface level, we're just going about our business, it's not really, um, it's just existing, um, it's very surface level, it's not feeding us, um, because we just need more and more. So the hole in the soul is I need more and more and more. It's very much lack consciousness. And it's also a, this programming that's in a lot of these um, companies and establishments, which are the old energy. And they are, well, you are not good enough unless you have this, or you are looking a certain way, or you are wearing this, um, and I'm not criticizing things in like, you know, if you wear something and you feel great in it, good for you. But this is like, you know, you wear it and then you need the next thing and then you need the next thing, you need the next thing. At a certain point you get, you think, you're, you're like a slave to the system, if that makes sense. So that's what the hole in the soul is. Um, but at a certain point we have to repair it. So we have to go within and, um, look at what feeds us on a soul level. And I think these players in the industry that we see, they, there's a certain point where they wake up and they realise what the industry is built on. Um, so it's like an empty feeling, an empty feeling. So again, when you see artists in the world and they, you know, and they've had a very difficult time and they've felt, I want to say like suicidal and they've had these very difficult, you know, periods in their life, is that I think this is when they've woken up and they've realised that they want to create for the sake of creating and they want to make a, a really decent income from their from their art, which it absolutely, um, but they've had to leave an industry or a system that doesn't allow them to do that. Uh, right, okay. I'm just having a look at the book to see if there's any messages coming out. So again, they have to put a mask on in order to fit in. And it just says here, being detached leads to profound loneliness and isolation as you are always mourning your true self. It's about mourning abandonment and neglect. So where we, where there is an abandonment and neglect, and I feel like this is what we see with a lot of the young youth and social media. Well, you know, if I'm not like this, or I don't look like this, and this is what a lot of these 
actors, these figures in the world are playing this role of, and it's something that I'm gonna not lie to you guys, it's really annoyed me sometimes like, because I cracked onto this a while ago and I was like, there's so much programming. Well, if this person uses this cream and, oh, but they've got amazing skin and they're probably having like diamond surface, whatever, facials and that's, oh, they've had plastic surgery and they've not told us this. I'm not saying this about anybody in particular, but it's not the full picture, is it? It's not the third eye, it's not the full view of everything, the full bird's eye view, which is the spiritual sight shows you this, it shows you the bigger picture. And then your crown chakra asks you not to judge it, just see it, just see it, and then make your sovereign choice from here, from the solar plexus. Um, and it would annoy me that I don't know, it's just, that it's just my ego, guys, but it would annoy me because I think it's just such BS. I know if I use that cream, I know I'm not going to look like whatever and whatever and whatever. You know, the biggest um, issue for skin and our bodies is stress. I'm not living that life where I'm pampered and pandered to and, you know, because I'm in a, I'm in a very lucky position and, you know, and I get given free things. I mean, we've got to put it into perspective, guys. And the thing is, people are very easily led. And yes, you might say to me, I can hear you saying, well, well, then why are they believing it? But the thing is, that's what people have to wake up to, don't they? The sovereign truth. And, and I, you know, truth, I don't know if it's the right word, but this sovereignty, their own choice, their own choice. And we are being thrown by things in the world about choice right now that we know of. And I actually watched a video by a medical professor and he was so incredible because it was it was by another doctor that I follow and he was talking about the language that they use now in medicine in order to speak the truth and educate in um, university. And he was saying that they'd actually even changed the, the meaning of the word um, you know, the jab, in, is it the Webster Dictionary? They've changed it recently. Anyway, he, it was all about critical thinking, questioning, and um, being able to basically see things as they are, not what we're being told by a politicised system. Don't want to get into that in this video though. So hole in the soul, but however, the phoenix is rising. So the phoenix is, this is Scorpio time. So Scorpio time is all about revealing the truth and showing things that are uncomfortable and then literally burning everything to the ground that isn't true. Um, so this is the card of it says on it, everything in life is falling apart in order to rise from the ashes with renewed strength. Um, so this is saying that you might, you feel you're walking through the fires of life right now in order to be cleansed and purified for rebirth, reclaiming your spirits. This is what the sovereignty is all about, guys. This is what the 1111 11 meditation is that I'm going to do. I'm going to probably do it later on tonight. Um, so it says here, um, isolate yourself from the chaos surrounding you. So again, it's not about being pulled into the drama. It's about feeling pain that has been previously suppressed in order to heal. Um I would say with this, it's revealing things that we see that are uncomfortable so they can come up for healing. Because Scorpio is the biggest transmutator and healer of these situations because it can go, the phoenix can go where no one else can go. Um, it says the universe has plans and opportunities that are better than you can imagine. So let go and trust and anticipate what is coming. Yeah. And this is so interesting because the courage card came out. So this is interesting. The help from above card, look, she's got the uh, link to music with the harp there. But also take off your masks. So all the masks are coming off now. All the masks. And 
you know, Spirit said to me years ago about this, that there'll be a time when in awakening, there's a time where you have to just be able to walk your own path and not be influenced by outside circumstances that aren't there to guide or protect you or to, to enhance connectivity with each other because it doesn't keep them in that place of power and control. And this is what a lot of people are waking up to, so take off your mask. I really like this card. It's an, an 11 card, which is a master card. Um, so this is... Uh, you cannot get the love and attention you are craving by pretending to be some someone you are not. So what's the story that you're telling yourself? I mean, do you know yourself? Do you know who you are? Do you know what you like? Uh, if you took all of these outside influences away, do you know what you like? Um, do you know what you want? I mean, it's great to have things as inspiration. It's great to seek a uh, catalyst and inspirational um, focus points in your life to wake you up to what you do like or to instigate a change in your life that may be overdue. But do we give our power away to them? So this is a great card here. Um, why are you so frightened, to be honest with yourself and others? Do you feel that you will lose friends and opportunities by showing others your imperfections, fears and vulnerabilities? Are you constantly doing things to please others, even if doing this does not work for you? I feel like this is a message for young people, uh, for the youth of today, because they've grown up with social media and it's what it's, it influences them. This card indicates that you need time to get to know yourself and what is important in your life. You will know that you are evolving when other people's judgments of you no longer impact you. It's hard that though when you're young because peer pressure is like, you know, there's so much bullying that goes on that's very hidden and it's um it's covert and it's very much it's not obvious and it's sometimes hard to uncover so i was just wondering what that was then but i think it's the rain outside uh if you have an incredible talent believe in yourself don't hide your greatness because others feel envious or resentful remember every great leader had people who loved them and believed in them as well as those who doubted and disliked them so i think this is for young people like knowing that just if it doesn't fit in with social media or it doesn't look a certain way it doesn't mean it, it it's wrong if it feels right within your body and your knowing then it's right for you let's have one more card on this a message for the youth um, it takes a lot to stand in your own power sometimes but when you're there no one and nothing can really touch you it takes courage cycles of entrapment wow so this is what we've been shown here we're showing this, these, all, these systems what they're really built on what their agenda really is Um. <clears throat> where the light is shining on a lot of these areas of life um, and how much they're staring in plain sight at us. And do we have the strength but mostly the courage to face them? And that means a peaceful self-regulation. So this, this is like the sovereignty card. I feel like the calm in the waters is very much like, if you look at this woman, like she's she's consulting her own inner muse. She's, it's a three card. So three numerology is all about, it's the third house in astrology, which is about communication. So she's listening to herself. She's listening to her own knowledge and wisdom. She's got a crown on her head. <laughs> I mean, if that is not a nod to sovereignty, I've just noticed that now. I mean, what is? Where have we given our power away to outside forces and stories? Well, if it's this way, it has to be so. No, it doesn't. Anything else, please? And the Priestess of Light Oracle. Thank you. And then I will close down. Oh, and my, um, my Sage Wick stick i don't know what you call these has just burnt down let's have another cleanse console your inner shaman like let's get shamanism f fashionable 
and you know drumming and dancing and there's so much freedom to it and that kind of group energy it's not about having to I don't care who's around and what's around me at the expense of others it's it's coming together with music sound art wisdom to feel connected and to feel um yeah and where you can really be yourself you're not giving it over to this model of oh well this is in fashion now and um car alarm's just gone off to be fair that's been going off for days it has its moments where it goes off there's something that it just it's random points in the day and it just goes off i don't know whose car it is right any messages more messages from the priestess of light open heart deep connections and water blessings there's lots of healing coming um miracles ancient wisdom and balance stable stability standing firm so these are the messages for our 1111 probably need to put this as an 11 11 video actually guys and also um and it's actually got 11 on the card as well opening heart deep connections and water blessings so this is building a deeper connection with yourself uh miracles is it's consulting ancient wisdom there's a nod to isis in that card and balance it's it's stability and standing firm whatever that means to you right guys i'm going to leave it there a bit of a long video here today but um i've got to look at these doorways because i think there's a message for people that i like to focus as well on if there's a specific message for somebody that can help them well that's just what i was guided to do with spirit um so i need to go off and and prepare for that really prepare this space but I feel like the energy is prepared now in here um to do the reading I've just got to go and do some day stuff uh wherever that is yeah go with the flow on top of the cards uh letting go cleansing and receiving so I think this is like it's like um a couple of days now where we're, we're letting go of a lot of things that don't serve us or we might start seeing things over this next couple of days before this portal where we're like I'm so sick of this I'm so over this now and it means disconnecting yourself from outside information that might be wisdom for somebody else but it's not for you and it's time now to create your own story in your own life and I don't know what that's going to look like for everybody it's going to be different Right, guys, lots of love, and I will see you in the next video, which I will pop on here on 11.11. Take good care of yourselves. Have a lovely day. Lots of love.